record on this. Okay, so yeah, so you do want to have a piece of paper. I personally like to have a piece of paper, though I do have several of my leaders who remind me I should be putting it in a notebook so that I don't lose all my pieces of paper. Anybody else like <laughs> have pieces of paper everywhere? But for this one, for sure, it is nice to have something that you're going to be able to refer back to. So this is going to be a way to cast a vision for a long time, long term goal, and then to step it back into um, the now like what you need to do now to be working towards something that is a long way out. Because a lot of times uh, we stop ourselves before we even get started, right? So if you think about, um, if you think about something that you've maybe really desired in your life, um, oftentimes we get to a point where we talk ourselves out of even dreaming or trying for it because we decide in the now, right now, there's no way that I could do that. There's no way that somebody like me could do it. There's no way that I'm going to be able to get the things that I need to be able to hit that huge goal. Because if you look at some of the numbers, the numbers seem big and scary. 60,000 points seems like a lot of stuff, especially if you are doing Norwex casually, but it really does turn into bite-sized little pieces that I've seen people achieve who are working full-time. Even women in our team who are working full-time have found a way to kind of bring this experience into their life. And once you do achieve it, guys, those of you who have been on trips already with Norwex, tell me what it was like your first time. Tell me what it was like the first time that you experienced one of those trips, because usually what happens is once you achieve a goal, then you can stretch yourself a little bit further. And you usually don't want to miss any more trips ever again. So again, I've just quickly asked you to use the chat. Make sure you keep yourself muted and grab yourself a piece of paper so that we can get started. Um, I was not able to live stream into the group, so I am recording this so that others can check it out later. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody in the waiting room here. Nope. Good. Okay. So it is okay to dream. I want right now for you to spend a moment asking yourself if you've even allowed yourself to believe that you can achieve that trip. Okay. And get really honest with yourself. When you think about going and you hitting 60,000 points and getting a free trip to Hawaii, what is your brain telling you right now? Is your brain telling you reasons why you can or why you can't? This kind of awareness is really important when it comes to achieving goals, because guys, oftentimes it's not failure that kills dreams, it's doubt. And the doubt can start right from the beginning. So I want to tell you right now that you get to push yourself out to a year from now and play in that area like a kid. Remember when we were little and we would get excited about things and we're like, yeah, I'm going to do that. And whether it happened or not, we were okay. But somewhere along the way, as we became adults, we started wanting things to happen. And when they wouldn't, we would feel like a failure. And then we would try to not have that feeling again. And then we would not stretch ourselves as far. So sometimes when we wanted to achieve something, we'd make sure that we would know that we're 99% sure that we can do it before we actually declare it. In this case, when you're casting a big vision for yourself, when you're casting a big goal for yourself, you have to be willing to stretch beyond knowing if it's actually going to happen or not, and just enjoy the dreaming part. Okay, so the first part of this goal is to, on the back of your page, okay, you're going to write your one year goal. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but here's my one year goal, earning a free trip to Hawaii. And actually, I should add on there for myself and hubby. And those of you who think I just magically like earn these trips all the time, I have not earned the past two trips. Um, and I currently have one booking on my calendar and that's it. <laughs> so I also am having to stretch myself into a place where this is what I want and I am going to declare it. So your one year goal is where we're going to start. What do you want to achieve in one year? Which level are you wanting to achieve? And if you're even having a hard time writing this down, this is where you get to take the time to look at what kind of thoughts are already there telling you you can't, because that is the challenge that you're going to be up against most. Okay, all of us live right in between these two things right here. Okay, we experience our life 
through our brains. So if it's already telling us all the reasons why we can't, and we haven't even started yet, you better believe that it's going to keep coming up. And it's okay to have doubts, guys. It is normal to have doubts, but the goal is to pull ourselves around them, embrace them, allow them to be what they need to be, but know that we can continue moving forward beyond them, which sometimes, depending on how many times you've not been able to achieve a goal in the past, there can be a little bit of a, of a memory there of pain of failure or feeling like you can't do it. This is your opportunity to push through it. Because ultimately, guys, when you set a goal, even if you don't get there, there's so many amazing things that happen along the way. Like what is the worst that can happen if you try to do 4,000 in sales a month? The worst that can happen is maybe you'll do 3,500 or maybe you'll do 1,000, but you're still going to have an active growing business and you'll be leaning forward into it. So even if your dream is there and it doesn't become recognized this time, all of the things that are going to happen along the way are going to build a lot of tenacity and a lot of success and a vision for yourself and the future of your business inside of the journey to get there. Does that make, does that make sense? <laughs> it's okay if you do uh, do it after your bath. Yes, you don't want to, you don't want to have paper in the bath. <laughs> okay. So we're at the one year mark, the one year, one year from now, guys, one year from now, we just had conference. They just announced all of the people who earned the trip and you were one of them. How does that feel? Write down your top three feelings right here. Okay. In your one year goal. So one year from now, they just had you, they just had you walk across the stage. Let's just say it. The conference is going to be in person this year. They just had you walk across the stage because you were one of the trip achievers. What three words explain how you are feeling being on that stage a year from now at conference, because you are going to Hawaii for free. Mm -hmm. Emotional is a good one too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody want to share any other words other than I see Tiff is Tiff is sharing quite a bit on there. And um, I don't know how to make it either. I see you guys are are um there we go is that better i spotlighted it so i'm in the center here because i saw kirsten as well okay so we're one year out when you're vision casting when you're setting a long-term goal what you'll find happens is that sometimes it's more of an emotional experience it's more of a feeling experience because it's way out there it's a year from now you can insert any emotion that you want in there you can throw tons of goal. i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna drop 25 pounds and i'm gonna i'm gonna earn all the all the income i'm gonna have a giant team you can throw whatever you want in there when we're way back here a year before that happens, it's very easy to declare what we want. Even if there's some doubts, it's easier to kind of be like, yep, I'm going to do all these things. I'm going to do all these things. And then we set it down and then it's like, okay, now what, what do I do now? And often this is where I find people get trapped in the, the PPP. And I want to look at the, look at my notes here. Cause I, I thought this was brilliant, but it's perfectionism, procrastination, and then paralysis. And this happens with a lot of people. A lot of people who are in this business are A type and they want to be perfect in the way they do things. And they don't wanna do things until it's perfect. So, so, so they set themselves up in this, in this trap where unless it's perfect, which is totally subjective, they can't even begin what they want to do. Are you one of these people? Do you feel like unless you can give 110%, you're not doing it? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Everybody be honest. I want to hear. Are you a perfectionist? <laughs> I see people are expressing that they are a perfectionist. <laughs> A recovering perfectionist. I like it. <laughs> so perfectionism comes from a fear of failure. I'm going to say that again. Perfectionism comes from a fear of failure. Okay, so you've done things in your life, you've done your best, and it wasn't enough, and you didn't get what you wanted, and you decided it was because you didn't do it perfectly. 
So when we decide we want to do things perfectly, it's actually a protection mechanism to keep us uh, from leaning all the way into what we want to do. So we want it to be perfect, but perfect is subjective and we're self-critical. So we criti criticize ourselves, which then leads to procrastination because we feel like we can't be perfect. So why bother even starting and we totally get overwhelmed, which is what leads to the paralysis, the overwhelmment. Okay, so the next part that I'm going to share you, share with you, we're going to break that one year vision, which was very much about feeling back down into what's going to happen in a six month goal, what's going to happen in a three month goal, what's going to happen in a six week goal, and notice the butterflies in your stomach as you get closer to today, which is what's going to happen in a two week goal. Okay, but, but don't get ahead of me here. Let's push back out to the year. You're in Hawaii, you walked across the stage, you achieved it and you didn't do it perfectly, okay? It is not possible to do it perfectly because perfect doesn't exist. Perfection is just a fear of failure and it is a tool that we use to prevent ourselves from taking risks, taking risks towards the things that we desire. And guys, I can tell you that the most brilliant thing about our industry is that unless we help other people, we can't, achieve what we want to inside of our business. It is a beautiful give and take flow. It's a wholeness. It's a natural, like I always think of that infinity symbol. We help others. It brings us success in our business by our own definition. We bless others with Normex. It brings us what we're looking for in our business. We invite others to come into our team. It brings us what we're looking for to earn some of the things like these trips. Okay. So I want you to drop the perfectionism. You can't do this perfectly. In fact, nobody can do it perfectly because it doesn't exist. Mind the PPPs, okay? All right, so hang on. What did I do with my sheet now? Here it is. All righty. So I want you to draw a square on your page now. So you see how I've divided it into four sections. So this side is the one year with my goal, the one that I want to do, and you'll have your feelings, how it feels to achieve it. And then on this side, I want you to do six months, three months, six weeks, two weeks. Okay. And we're going to step it back. We're going to keep stepping it back. So six months from now, you're six months in you are in a space where you're halfway through. So the first thing that we do when we're halfway towards something is we review and we reflect. So I want you to write that in your six month goal area. Review and reflect. You get to look at the things that you've been doing the past six months and decide, is this in alignment with me as a person? Is this in alignment with my goals? Am I feeling good about what I've achieved so far? These are the kinds of questions that you ask yourself at the halfway mark, because there's still time to adjust the trajectory of where you're going with your business or where you're going as you're headed towards your goal. And the cool thing is, is that when we get back to the three months, the six weeks and the two weeks, you're just gonna wash, rinse, repeat with all those things moving beyond the six month, right? So you'll already have your whole, all your whole action plan set up for you. Just at the six month mark, that's when we get to look at what we did. And the key here is to do it in a way that doesn't make you feel bad, okay? There's still time to correct. It's also important that you see how far you have come from where you were from today. So today, right now, what your business looks like and how you feel about it. And then six months from now, what your business looks like and how you feel about it. There's going to be a significant difference whether you feel like you're on track or not. Okay. The reflecting time is going to become something that I'd like to invite you to consider doing fairly often inside of your business. I know there's some leaders um, in our, like in the GV forest that actually will do this monthly, reflect on what worked, what didn't, what they want to tweak, what they want to change, how they feel about their businesses. And when I start coaching with them as well, I'm often reminding them to make sure that they're building in me time, self-care, downtime. Because remember what I said at the beginning, 
we all live right in here between our two ears. And it's what our minds are telling us about ourselves, about our actions, about what we can achieve that ends up making or breaking us, guys. So the reason for self-care isn't to... Um, isn't to waste time or, you know, be frivolous or, or sit around and eat bonbons. It's to rejuvenate. It's to go within and know truly who you are and why you're doing it. It's to reconnect to your one year of you walking across the stage. Right. Okay. Is there any questions about the six month goals? Is there anything else that you would add in there for yourself? Feel free to use the chat if you want to. Self-care is not hard, Tiffany. Stop telling yourself that story. <laughs> Self-care requires planning when you're not used to it. It literally has to go into your calendar, not <laughs> you get in the bath and do more training. <laughs> It has to just be bath time. <laughs> Called you out, girl. Okay. Um, L.A. Siegel question. Are these goals related to self or the Norwex business? Both. You are your Norwex business. That's why it's so important that you are caring for yourself. That is how you keep yourself in alignment with your goals instead of getting completely flattened, trying to get more parties, get more team members, get more sales, do all the things, do all the training, know all the things ah, and go crazy, which just throws you back into that cycle of perfectionism, procrastination and, um, and paralysis where you just like get stuck and don't feel good about things. Your feelings are equally as important as your actions guys. And if that sounds a little too woo for you, think about things that you've achieved in your life. When you feel good about something that you want to do or are doing, it doesn't feel like work. And when you achieve it, it feels amazing. It's the feeling that we're connected to, not the to-do list. I hope that that made sense. These goals are, yeah, so specifically we're talking about earning a free trip to Hawaii, but I'm telling you that part of casting a long-term goal, a one-year goal, is becoming aware of the feelings you're going to have at the end and breaking it down into action steps and monitoring yourself and how you feel about it as well, okay? And this means, you know, if you get to the six-month mark and you are totally not feeling confident things aren't going the way that you want to, you're not quite sure what to do, that's when you reach out to your upline or you reach out to an RSM or you listen to a podcast or you reach out to somebody that's going to help you shift you back into a mindset where you believe you can do the things that you want to. Because if you're already telling yourself that you can't, you're going to be right, right? It's important that even though we have doubt that we still move beyond it and see the potential of what we can do. I hope that answered your question. Okay. So next one is three months. Three months from now, this business runs in a three month cycle. Have you guys ever noticed that? So what you do today and what you're working on today typically shows up as results in the next six to six weeks to three months. So it's like we plant a seed. There isn't always um, immediate satisfaction with some of the actions that we take, but they do end up showing up at the three month mark. So three months from now is when you're going to recognize that you're a quarter of the way there. This is when you're going to have a look at your, your numbers. You're going to look at your points. You're going to also think about the things that kind of helped you a little bit along the way and continue working through your list, which we'll get to at the six week and the two week mark. But at this time too, this is going to be November 10th. Okay. November 10th is three months from now. What are some of the things that we think about in November guys? Holidays. Yep. Feel free to use the chat as well, guys. Yep. Holidays is definitely something that we think about. This is going to be the time of year that people will be doing holiday shopping. It's also going to be the end of year. That's right. So there will be new products coming in January 
But we also are going to have that new mini mailer, uh, which usually comes around October. So three months from now, there's going to be people who are in the, the shopping mood. And there's also going to be people who are looking to earn extra income, as well as there's going to be a lot of opportunity to share new products with people. So three months, three, your three month goal really is going to have a lot to do with taking advantage of the wave that comes at that time of year that really elevates everybody's business across the board. Okay, it's normal. If you think of yourself as a store, I mean, stores are already advertising Halloween right now. Let's not do that. But if you think of yourself as a store, like that's the time of year that most people are paying attention to unique gift ideas, to wanting a little bit of that holiday flavor in things. And this is where you can begin to have some creative ideas and fun around that November 10th is the three month. Um, is the three month time. This is the, the time of year that Earth, yeah, that you can start having a little bit of fun with, with what you're doing in your business as well. Um, oh, that's cool, Holly, that your son's birthday is in November. So you celebrate that with your VIPs and do an annual fundraiser with your son and your group. That's beautiful. That is amazing. Okay, the three month mark also, if you're earning for one person is the time that you're gonna wanna have around 15,000 points. Or if you're going for two people, 27,500 is the points there. So it can be helpful, helpful also to write the point values down of what you're aiming towards so that you can kind of track your progress at any given time. And notice as we get closer to three months, November 10th doesn't sound that far away from now. <laughs> but, the, but the action steps that we're taking still are kind of in a reflection and review space. So it still feels doable, it still feels achievable, doesn't feel that scary. But let's move up to six weeks from now. How's your belly feel when we think about where you gotta be in six weeks to achieve this? <laughs> uh -huh. So notice that the closer that we get to the now, the more we start having doubt and the more we start freaking out and the bigger all of a sudden our to-do list becomes and our brains start racing and we're like, ah, and the overwhelm starts. And this is where we have to be really balanced in the way that we approach what we want to do. Okay, so six weeks from now is September 29th. That's really close, guys. <laughs> Panic, nervous, yep. <laughs> Fluttery, yep. <laughs> it is close. September 30th is really close. But you know what? Norex is very strategic in the time that they do their conferences and when they start the, the new year for us to begin counting points. Because once we kind of get through August, which August can be a very busy month as well. Sorry, there's a fly in here. August can be a very busy month uh, for your business as well. If you choose to, to lean into it in the summer, there is a lot of opportunity, but September is when everybody gets back into routine, including you, okay? The kids go back to school, the teachers go back to school, everybody knows what to expect. Usually it's not like the lazy, hazy days of summer. People are kind of more aligned and more knowing what their schedule is going to be like, which actually lends itself more to our business because it's, it's easier for people to be able to plug in where they want to have a party for you. It's easier for you to decide where you have time to do multi-host events or fundraisers, et cetera. So in six weeks from now, this is where you want to kind of have your calendar organized. Oh my God goodness there's a whole house fly go find it okay so your calendar is going to be like how often can you party this would be where even now I would suggest kind of looking out towards September 30th and marking the times that you would be willing to open your calendar to do an event for somebody a multi-host event a fundraiser or do something special inside of your VIP group okay September 30th also means that craft fairs are going to begin opening up. And I've seen some virtual ones, but I know that some in-person ones have started up too. This is where you have an opportunity to kind of find these little places to kind of expand your influence with Norex and also to make sure that you have the momentum that you're looking for for the rest of the year and specifically to get to that six month mark, right? So this would also be a time where I want you to write down, you want to ask yourself, do I need a little coaching? 
Or do I need a little chat? Do I need a little something to kind of perk me back up to the words and the emotions that you wrote down when you achieve it? Do you need something to help you reconnect to that? Okay, because usually in the first one to six weeks of setting a long-term goal, that's when you're going to be busier taking action steps to start creating the, the momentum. It's kind of like when you want to get a ball rolling a little bit downhill, you kind of have to push a little bit and then eventually it will roll on its own. But in the beginning, when you're trying to increase momentum or increase um increase what your typical or average is when it comes to your business, there is a little bit more that you're going to have to do as a to-do list. So if you're finding at your six week mark that you're really feeling deflated, that is a time that I would encourage you to be reaching out to your upline, reaching out to an RSM, reaching out to a fellow GV Forest member, reaching out on the Hawaii page. If you're, I hope that you all are all in the um, going for a free trip to Hawaii page. That's the time that you want to make sure that those doubts don't creep in so badly that it just flattens you, you get overwhelmed, you give up six weeks in. Okay, it's easier to do it as a group. It's easier to do it as a community because we support and encourage each other. So I encourage you to lean into that as well. Um, all right. Here too, you can take time looking at what worked and what didn't. So what in the past six weeks worked and what didn't. And I'm also going to encourage you to, if you were at conference, one of the things that um, that always sticks out to me with Chris Carlson is her 645. So when she starts new consultants, she tells them you can earn money doing this. You can replace a full-time income. You can do it on part-time hours. Your goal is 645, six parties in the next 45 days. That will bring you what you are looking for inside of a Norwex business, including the three to 4,000 in sales plus one qualified recruit that will consistently every month bring you to the goal of earning the trip. Okay, so ready for two weeks, guys. <laughs> so we're in the two week mark. Who knows what the date two weeks from now is. <laughs> it is September 1st. Isn't that convenient? Yep, September 1st is in two weeks. Okay, so September 1st, I'm going to challenge you to post a screenshot of your point update inside of the Going for a Free Trip to Hawaii group for the whole GV Forest. Okay, so that's one thing I want you to write in there because accountability is also so vital when it comes to maintaining your goals. And the, the easiest way I can compare this is with weight loss. People have more success when they join a weight loss program than when they try to lose weight by themselves because somebody is keeping them accountable. Weight Watchers has weigh-ins. The apps have little badges that you get and track it. Even your Fitbit will tell you if you haven't achieved goals. I know my husband's watch actually buzzes and pretty much calls him lazy if he hasn't moved in a certain amount of time. So it's the same with the Hawaii group. Once a month, you post a screenshot of your, of your um, points. There's no judgment. We're just all there to support each other. And half the time, a lot of people aren't even looking at each other's points. It's just somewhere for you to plug in and keep yourself accountable as well. So the two-week goals are a little more action-based. And here's where the, the best practice truly is to consider yourself like a new consultant. So I know one of you said that you're a brand new consultant and you actually, oh, hi, is it? I don't know what your first name is. It just says LA. Do you want me to call you LA? Okay. Um, so LA is a new consultant. So she's starting right from the, right from the beginning where we all want to be. Those of us who have been in the business for a while have all of our history of how we've done our business before, and we need to refashion it and come into a space of the new consultant, the excited new consultant. And another thing that stood out to me from conference, and you can share if you guys love this too, is the one woman who was a testimonial. And she said that to get over her fear of asking for parties and asking for people to join her team, she had to realize that she either could be comfortable or be a blessing. And I was like, oh, girl, damn, that hit me right in the heart. Because that's truly what it is. Like I said before, the more we help others, the more we end up achieving a lot of the goals that we have for ourselves inside of our business. So you can be a blessing 
to others by sharing Norwex, by being willing to stretch yourself beyond your comfort zone and ask for what you want, knowing that in return, people are going to be blessed with information. Information is power. They're going to have less money spent at grocery stores and on chemicals. They're going to have improved health. And they potentially will get a mound of products. And if they join, they're also going to have an extra income for their household. So there's many facets to being a Norwex consultant that allow us to bless others. And this is a mantra that I encourage you to take when you're starting to feel the fear of asking, do I want to be a blessing or do I want to be comfortable? If you can work this into your own practices, getting used to becoming an ask an asker and being okay with it because you know what's on the other side for them, that practice is going to become more and more natural as you move forward. And it won't be as difficult as you're heading towards this trip of a lifetime. Okay. And I still have to get coached about that too. Tiff actually had to, had to remind me that I had to rework my ask muscle again, because it had been a couple of years of transition and I hadn't been doing it as often. And then all the doubt starts coming in again all the worry and taking things personally when people say no starts coming in again. Cause I was thinking about, I was asking for myself instead of realizing that I'm asking cause I'm inviting them to consider it for them. All right. So when you are in your two week phase, there's a, there's a lot of things that I have on this list and I, I encourage you to choose like two or three. Okay. The main things of this party are book, sell, recruit. And that might sound really old fashioned, but that's the gist of it. And then it's just repeat. That is the way that we move forward in our business. And you don't have to do parties if you don't want to, but I will tell you that you will have to talk to a lot of people one-on-one -on -one or do a lot of events in your VIP group. If you're not going to host any kind of, of uh, in-party, I don't even know if people are doing in-home parties right now, but if you're not going to do any kind of party type thing, it will be a little more challenging. There will be some more time spent trying to increase your sales volume to hit the points that would be required for Hawaii. And if you don't agree with me, if there's any leaders on here, I would love to hear what you think about that. I just personally have found that it's easier to talk to a group of people, 10, 20, 30 people, instead of talking to each one of those 30 people individually about the same thing. Okay, so what you want to do is become familiar with the different party or event styles. And this is where the resource.ca will become your best friend. Just click on the new consultant tab. There's digital parties, Zoom parties, in-person parties, also fundraisers. And then it's extra important, guys, that you are taking advantage of any events that your leader is running for the entire team because that is work that is set up and done for you. Okay, so if there's paper towel challenges, laundry challenges, body cloth challenges, new product premieres, you wanna be plugging into these. Even if you don't have guests who come to them, you yourself become reinvigorated by seeing the comments that are there and the way that people are excited about what's going on. Because oftentimes, again, when that doubt creeps in or when we hear no too many times, we think that it's because nobody wants Norwex, nobody wants to have parties, oh, nobody, you know, it's saturated, nobody wants it. And we create this grand story in our minds when really there's new consultants coming in doing like $20,000 in sales just off of their excitement and just off of them leaning into it and throwing care to the wind and just going for it. And that's a space that we want to kind of shift ourselves into. And it might be easier for some than others, but I will tell you that it is a learnable skill. You will be able to master that skill as you're doing it from your heart and as you're realizing what it is that you love about sharing it with others. So becoming familiar with all the different party styles. If you're not familiar with that, that's going to be number one on your list. What are the different ways to share in Rx? Okay. Next is automating as much as possible. There are Visly codes. I think we have seven months right now, seven months worth of, of posts for your VIP group automated through a Visly code. So if you don't have a VIP group, you need to set that up, find the codes. You should be able to find them from your leader, plug it in and get your VIP group going because that is the way that you care and communicate with your customers. <clears throat> okay. Um, mantra needs to be don't take it personally because you will be making an ask of yourself. 
Okay, it all begins, everything begins and ends with willing to say, hey, would you consider hosting with me? There's a ton of different places that you can get verbiage for this if you're not quite sure what to say. But remember that this is to serve the other person. Yes, you are going to earn a, a commission. Yes, you might get some free product. Yes, if you, if you end up having people join your team and you become a team coordinator, you're also going to get 3% of their sales and so on. But ultimately, you are the one who has to be brave enough to lean in and share a piece of yourself, which is what you're passionate about with Norvex. What's the reason that you joined? Why do you want to share it with others? And it's okay if it's because you want some extra income because money is what brings us the experiences that we're looking for of ease and joy. And ultimately, I think a lot of us wish to have more than we need so that we can give back to the, to the places that we feel need help because that's what they're asking for as well. So one of the ways that you can really emotionally detach from people saying no to you about things is that instead of basing your, your success or your goal on the number of people who say yes, you base your, your goal on the actions that you're taking. And I'm going to go a little more in depth with this in a couple of weeks. I'm going to do an intentional action plan. It's like a little course where I teach people how to shift these goals, but it's basically, let's say you want those six parties in 45 days. Typically, you usually have to ask like anywhere from six to 10 people if they'll host before you get one yes. So if 10 people have to be asked before you get one yes, if you want six yeses, you have to ask 60 people. So your goal in the next 45 days would be to ask 60 people. And that's what you would track. Not how many say yes, but how many people you ask. And what that does is it detaches you from only feeling good when you arrive at the goal that you want. Does that make sense, guys? Just drop a yes in the chat or a thumbs up in the chat. If not, I'll try and explain it again. But I am going to do actually a six-week kind of course. So we'll have a six-week. It'll be like this. I'm going to do it via Zoom. And it will be over six weeks. I'll start it in a couple of weeks so that I give you two weeks to kind of get yourself set up. But then it will be like a, a check-in of different goals. <laughs> Crystal, I need to be excited. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Just let me make sure I didn't miss anything on here. Oh, and the other thing I want to say about your two-week goal is you need to decide how much time you have for this. That is so important. Okay. If you try to just squeeze what you want to do in your business into your free moments. Sorry, I feel like there's mostly women on here. So if there's a man on here, I'm sorry, but we're busy as women in our minds, especially, but we try to squeeze in as much as we can, as often as we can to try and get ahead of ourselves. But then we just end up doing all the things all the time. So consistency is really important when it comes to this business so there isn't burnout and so that you don't get flattened. So decide how much time and how often in a week you have to put into your asking. And that is what your focus is in your next two weeks. If you don't have a Frankie list, this is where it's time to make one. Does everybody know what a Frankie list is? LA, Frankie list is friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors um the k is kids or i say like any nieces nephews like acquaintances tied to those children and i is internet so this is a list of people who are kind of like your warm market people who you know and it's reaching out to them in the beginning you make your list and then you reach out to these people either by inviting them to your launch party which if you are a um if you are a seasons consultant, you can still do a launch for yourself again. If you don't have parties on your calendar, do one or two launch parties for yourself. You can offer a free gift to anybody who comes out, or you can just ask them to give you feedback because you're trying to figure out the virtual world. That's what I've been doing. If you're a new consultant, it's definitely your launch. So you can invite people into your launch party and inside of your launch party is when you get to share the benefits of Norex, the benefits of hosting, the benefits of joining. And that's where you kind of start reaching out into the rest of, um, the, rest of the world and the people that you're gonna impact with your business. So if you don't have that list of people, either 
virtually somewhere or written down, it's time to make one. This is what is also going to keep you accountable to if you are actually taking the time to ask. This is not in the two week goals, guys, this is not the time to be watching a ton of webinars on products and figuring out, um, you know, I don't know, trying to figure out the compensation plan or taking in a ton of information about how direct sales works. The, the thing that is going to bring you what you're looking for is always going to be interacting with people, building relationships, and that comes through communication. And it comes through being willing to ask and invite. That is what you focus on in your first two weeks, especially because for most of us in here, we need to up level our points. If our goal is to feel the way that it's going to feel when we walk across stage because we earned a free trip. Right. So um, September 1st is your six weeks. Does everybody have that written down or sorry, is your two week goal. And in two weeks, I will check in and see if anybody wants to jump into the intentional action plan. So again, I'm going to say, do you notice how when you're casting a vision for yourself, a long term goal, the further away it is, the easier it is to be, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to feel that way. It's going to be great. And then the closer we get to now, the more it's like, ah! and that's when our brains, we need to really master the way that it is controlling our actions. And oftentimes our fears are just based on past experiences. But when we allow past experiences to determine how future experiences are going to be, we just continue repeating history. And that's not what we want to do. Your past experience have brought you exactly to this place. And it's given you information and tenacity and um, experience that you need to move forward into what is next. But you can't know what is next until you get there. So you get to dream any way that you want to. And if you find yourself grabbing something that happened in the past and throwing it ahead of you as an expectation of what you think is going to happen again, just know that it's okay to feel that way. Step back for a minute, take a deep breath and remind yourself that the future is unwritten. So you can get excited and dream about anything that you want to and then continue on your way in that moment, what you can do right now. Who else can you ask? Who else can you invite? What other event can you plug into? Is there a team meeting come up that you should plug into? Is Norex doing something on the, on the um, consultant connection on Facebook that you can plug into? Is there a podcast that's going to lift your mindset? Is there something that inspires you, a person maybe who you can reach out to for a little pep talk? There are lots of ways to achieve goals. It's mostly about noticing when you start trying to talk yourself out of them. Okay, so I agree, anxiety and worry is hard to eliminate and it is a practice. And the worry again is often tied to us either living in the past with stuff that happened or worrying about something that might happen in the future instead of being right now here, which is the only thing that we have control over and the only time we actually have to do things. So I'm going to leave it with that for now. Uh, LA, yes. Safe Haven 5 and what's in your kit, like just what you got in your starter kit is the best place to start with a party because you're using it, right? And when you're new, like if people ask you about something you don't know about, you can be like, hang on, I'll find a video or I can ask somebody or if you get it, you let me know because you have 60 days to try everything and I am looking for feedback because I'm new, right? So you always start with the basics and LA, I will tell you, I've been doing this for 13 years every party has a safe haven five in the mop because there is that many new people who haven't heard of Norwex before. We're in less than 3% of North American households. You will always forever <laughs> be talking about the safe haven five. <laughs> and the rest comes as you get free product, as you get shopping sprees, as you decide to, to purchase things for yourself or in your launch parties, you're gonna get free stuff as a host, you're gonna get free shopping spree money so you can start accumulating things that you wanna try out so that you can share that with others too. Because it's really difficult, I find, personally, I have to try stuff before I can really promote it to people. But once I've tried it and I'm in love with it, I just want to tell everybody about it. And it's been like that forever with the, with the Safe Haven 5, for sure. Is there any other questions, guys? I'm just going to stop recording and then get this uploaded after.